primitive vascular land plants produced spores which were all morphologically and structurally alike, a condition called homospore. All groups of land plants up to lower pteridophytes such as club mosses and horse tails are homosporous. These plants show a life cycle like one found in ferns in which spores are produced that germinate into small gametophytes which ultimately produce male and female gametes. The male gametes would swim across moist soils to find the female gametes produced in the female sex organs on the same or another gametophyte where they would fuse to produce an embryo which would germinate into a sporophyte. This mode of reproduction however restricted early land plants to thrive only in damp environments to transport male gametes to their destination. Therefore, early land plants were forced to be confined to lowlands near shores and streams. The evolution and development of the process of heterospory freed them from this limitation. Heterospory as the name suggests is the production of spores by the sporophytes of land plants which are morphologically and physiologically of two types which include microspores and megaspores. Heterospory evolved from homospory independently in several plant groups in the Devonian period as part of the process of evolution at the time of sex differentiation. Heterosporic plants produce small spores called microspores which either germinate to become male gametophytes or have reduced male gametophytes packaged within them and large spores called megaspores that germinate into female gametophytes or have female gametophytes packaged within them. Heterospory is known in nine genera of pteridophytes which include Selaginella, Isoitis, Citellitis, Marsilia, Pilularia, Regnelidium, Salvinia, Azola and Platysoma. Some of these genera generally approach the seed habit. The principal difference between homospory and heterospory is the separation of sexes at different points in the life cycle. Nevertheless, the evolutionary implications of this difference are profound. For example, seed plants which have female gametes in ovules and male gametes in pollen grains must show some differentiation of male and female gametophytes. Furthermore, an earlier separation of the sexes in the life cycle can be regarded as a division of labor, a common theme of evolutionary advancement. A detailed study of heterosporous forms has revealed that heterospory originated due to reduction in the number of spores within sporangia. When all the spores in a sporangium are functional, there is greater competition for nutrition and as such a spore receives a limited food supply and consequently its size remains smaller that is microspores are formed. On the other hand, if some of the spore mother cells in a sporangium disintegrate during development, the remaining ones get sufficient nutrition for the development and consequently their size is increased that is megaspore is formed. Origin of heterospory received support from paleobotanical, developmental and experimental studies. Let us first discuss paleobotanical evidences of heterospory. Although most of the earliest vascular plants were homosporous, many fossils of the late Devonian and early Carboniferous period, for example, Lepidocarpon, Lepidostrobus, 
mesocarpon, sigillariostrobus, calamocarpon, and calamostigus were heterosporous. According to Scott, 1894, an indication of heterospory can be seen in two species of calamostigus, which include calamostigus biniana and calamostigus cassiana. In calamostigus biniana, most of the sporangia were with large number of similar spores in tetrads, but in some sporangia micro and megasporangium occurred. There were some aborted spores in the megasporangia indicating that megaspores were formed at the cost of abortion of some of the spores in the sporangium. A similar abortion of the spores was also observed in certain species of lepidocarpon, calamocarpon and Ceteropteris. For example, a mature megasporangium of lepidocarpon and calamocarpon had only a single functional megaspore as other spores aborted during development. And in Ceteropteris, a megasporangium had two functional megaspores and two aborted megaspores. These examples indicate that heterospory has not evolved in living forms, but was also present in fossil plants. And it originated due to disintegration of some spores in sporangium. Now, let us discuss the evidences from developmental studies. Developmental studies in pteridophytes, particularly the events that took place during formation of sporocytes, meiosis and maturation of spores provide a real insight into the understanding of heterospory. In Selaginella, the development of micro and megasporangium is similar till the differentiation of sporocytes. Subsequently, in the microsporangium, all the sporocytes undergo meiosis. With the result, a large number of microspores are formed. On the other hand, in the megasporangium, all sporocytes except one abort and the surviving sporocyte undergoes meiosis, forming four large functional megaspores. In some species of Selaginella, there is variation in the size of megaspores. For instance, in Selaginella stenophylla, two megaspores of a tetrad are slightly larger than the other two. And in Selaginella molliceps, one megaspore is larger and remaining three are smaller. An extreme case of reduction is found in Selaginella erythropus, where a megasporangium has only a single large megaspore with no traces of aborted spores. In isoitis, the microsporangia and megasporangia are identical till the differentiation of sporogenous tissue. In the microsporangium, almost entire sporogenous tissue forms sporocytes, which after meiosis give rise to a very large number of microspores. In the megasporangium, however, a part of the sporogenous tissue and also Many sporocytes degenerate and they provide nutrition to the growing sporocytes, that is megaspores. There are only 50 to 300 megaspores in a megasporangium. In Marsilia, differences in the development of microsporangium and megasporangium do not become evident until after meiosis. In a microsporangium, all the 64 microspores formed after reduction division are functional, but in the megasporangium, though also 64 spores are formed, only one is functional and the rest disintegrate. A similar condition also exists in Salvinia and Azola. Developmental studies have thus shown that determining processes of heterospory becomes operative either before or after meiosis. Before meiosis, for example, in Selaginella and Isoitis and after meiosis, 
for example, in Marsilia, Salvinia and Azola. Now, let us discuss evidence from experimental studies. Experimental studies on Silagenella and Marsilia have shown that heterospory originated due to nutritional factors. It was observed that if the photosynthetic activity of Silagenella was slowed down by keeping, keeping it in low light intensity, then only microsporangia developed. Due to low photosynthetic activity, nutrition became a limiting factor and spores could not grow in size. Thus, under such conditions, only microspores were produced. Similar results were obtained in experiments done on Marsilia. Now, let us discuss importance of heterospory. Heterospory expresses sex determining capability of the plant. In homosporous species, differentiation of sex takes place at the gametophytic stage, whereas in heterosporous species, differences in size of the spore is related to the sex of the gametophyte. That is, a microspore always gives rise to a male gametophyte and megaspore to a female gametophyte. Thus, in heterosporous forms, the sex of the gametophyte can be predicted at the spore stage. The biological significance of heterospory is that, in heterosporous forms, development of gametophyte is endosporic and the nutrition for the developing gametophyte is derived from the sporophyte. Hence, the development of gametophyte is not affected by ecological factors as in case of independently growing gametophytes. A seed consists of an embryo, stored food and a seed coat. Heterospory, which probably has evolved independently in several lineages, ultimately lead to the transition of seed formation. The transition to seeds continued with the megaspore being placed in its sporangium while it germinates. Then the megagametophyte is contained within a waterproof integument which forms the bulk of the seed. The microgametophyte, a pollen grain which has germinated from a microspore, is employed for dispersal, only releasing its desiccation prone sperm when it reaches a receptive megagametophyte. The best example of this transition is displayed by lycopods. Fossil lycopod megaspores reaching 1 cm in diameter and surrounded by vegetative tissues are known which even germinate into a megagametophyte in situ. However, they were not considered as true seeds because their nucleus does not completely enclose the spore. A very small slit remains meaning that the seed is still exposed to the atmosphere. This has two consequences. Firstly, it means it is not fully resistant to desiccation and secondly, sperms do not have to burrow to access the archegonia of the megaspore. Now, let us discuss the evolution of seed habit. The seed habit is the most complex and evolutionarily successful outcome of sexual reproduction in vascular plants. Since their first appearance in late Devonian, that is 300, about 385 million years before present, seed plants have come to dominate almost every terrestrial ecosystem. They also encompass a greater range of habit than any other group of tracheophytes. The ecological diversity of this group generally is attributed to their reproductive system, 
which permits these plants to exploit habit, habitats not accessible to most lower vascular plants. The earlier seed plants called progymnosperms emerge in the late Devonian period. Progymnosperm fossils show vegetative morphology is similar to seed plants, but not all progymnosperms had seeds or seed like structures. Archaeopteryx species was the first modern tree, but it produced heterospores rather than seeds. The progymnosperms are regarded as the ancestors of the seed plants. Fossils of seed bearing seed ferns that is Lygenotteropsida exhibit a variety of seed and seed like structures. The seed habit might have evolved once or several times during evolution. Three major evolutionary trends were important for the transition from the seed ferns to the gymnosperms, from the spores to the gymnosperm seed. The evolution from homospory to heterospory and connected with this from megasporangia with many spores to megasporangia with just one functional megaspore. Second, the evolution of the integument maternal tissue that protects the ovule. Third, the evolution of pollen receiving structures. This includes the transition to water independence of the pollination or fertilization process as water is required for fertilization. The earliest seed plants with seeds or seed like structures are Devonian seed ferns, which include Lygenotyropsida and pteridosperms. Several different types of preovules or preovule like structures are known. Not all characteristics of the seed habit are evident in these preovules. Runcaria, the oldest seed bearing seed, had a small, radially symmetrical, integumented megasporangium surrounded by a cupule. The megasporangium bears an unopened distal extension protruding out the multilobed integument. This extension is assumed to be involved in wind pollination. Runcaria sheds new light on the sequence of character acquisition leading to the seeds. In general, a seed is simply a mature ovule containing an embryo. An immature ovule consists of a diploid megasporangium containing a single functional megaspore that develops into a haploid megagametophyte. The megasporangium is surrounded by diploid covering layers, the integuments, which evolve into the seed coat. An integumentary opening at the apical end is important for pollination in seed ferns and modern gymnosperms. This opening evolved into the micropyle. The late Devonian and early Carboniferous seed ferns are sometimes collectively called Lygenopterids and include Alkinsia, Archaeosperma, Lygenostoma, Morosnitia, and Lygenopteris. These earliest seed bearing seed plants produce their preovules or ovules on dichotomously branched sterile structures called cupules. Cupules are cup like structures that partially enclose the ovule. In these early ovules, the nucellus was surrounded by integumentary tissue consisting of more or less free lobes.
the integumentary lobes curved inward at their tips forming a ring around the apical end. The integuments of the ovules evolved through gradual fusion of the integumentary lobes. The integuments later evolved into the seed coat. An opening that was left at the apical end evolved into the micropyle. It permitted pollen to enter and to fertilize the egg cell. The earliest seed plants employed hydrosperman reproduction in which pollination occurred when wind blown pollen was directed into a semi closed pollen chamber. In several cases, a specialized lagenostome was used for pollen capture. A lagenostome is a funnel like structure of the nucellus that projects from the top of the megasporangium. It functions as a trumpet like pollen trapping device. From there the pollen was delivered to the pollen chamber. A central column that is the legionostome column was attached to the pollen chamber floor that sealed the chamber to provide optimal conditions for pollen germination. As the megagametophytes mature, the opening to the pollen chamber is sealed and the floor is ruptured, allowing fertilization to proceed. The germinated pollen grain settles into an intimate proximity to the ovule and delivers the spermatozoids into the archegonia with the egg cells. Fossil records suggest that the sperm delivery required lysis of the megasporangium wall. The important issue was that pollination and or fertilization became more water independent during evolution which facilitated the diversification of seed plants from carboniferous through to the present day. So far, embryos have not been found in Devonian seed fern fossils. The seed ferns are a paraphyletic group of extinct gymnosperms, an interesting group the Middle Ocean seed ferns were abundant trees in Carboniferous flood plains and extend well into the Permian. This group includes Trigonocarpus, Pachy testa, Rhinocosperma, Medullosa, and Stephanospermum. Fossil seeds from Middle Ocean seed ferns are several millimeters to several centimeters long. In some cases, even embryo structures have been preserved. The ovules are usually radiospermic with one end of the integument drawn out into a micropyle that probably helped guide pollen to the megagametophyte within. A pollination drop mechanism may also have aided pollen capture. A small pollen chamber appears just inside the micropyle. This structure is preserved in detail in a number of Devonian and Carboniferous seed fossils. A loss of the cupule and loss of the legionostome column was evident in Middle Ocean seed ferns. The integument of Pachytesta and Stephanospermum is three layered with an epidermis and outer fleshy layer that is Sarcotesta covering a tough fibrous Sclerotesta and thin Endotesta which lays adjacent to the nucellus. In Stephanospermum Cono penis ovules are apical, funnel aided, wind blown pollen capture. Beyond the micropyle, 
and tip of the sclerotestal beak, the sarcotesta flares open and as a funnel that tapers to the micropylar opening at the tip of sclerotestal beak. The rim of the funnel forms the broad apex of the ovule. The endotesta of stephanospermum ovules is thin and lines the inner surface of the sclerotesta. The nucellus and the megagametophyte are poorly preserved in the stephanospermum ovule fossils. In these ovules, the nucellus may have consisted of only a few layers of thin walled parenchyma surrounding the megaspore membrane. The nucellus is attached to the integument only at the base of the ovule. The megaspore membrane is robust and consists of a distinct network of granules and rods of sporopollenin covered by a homogeneous outer layer. Cells of the megagametophyte are not preserved from stephanospermum ovule fossils. ferns like Lygenopteridopsida, pteridosperms are a paraphyletic group of extinct gymnosperms. Figure shows reconstruction of ovules or seeds of polyterospermum nolti and polyphospermum stephens. The relationship of these ovules with the medullosian seed ferns uh, are discussed with regard to a large number of radiospermic seed genera found in association at the time of locality. As far as polyterospermum rinolti is concerned, it is an ovoid seed 3 cm long, hexagonal in cross section with 12 alternating large and small ridges called wings of the sclerotesta. A sarcotesta is absent, but an inner fleshy endotesta is described. The nucellus is variable in thickness and a dome shaped pollen chamber is evident. A structure interpreted as pollination droplet on the nucellar beak contains numerous pollen grains. As far as polyphospermum stephens is concerned, it is a long cylindrical seed 3 cm long round to hexagonal in cross section with a smooth outer surface. The integument is differentiated into an outer parenchymatous sarcotesta and an inner sclerotesta with 6 prominent ribs alternating with six smaller ribs. A characteristic feature is the prolongation of the sclerotesta at each end of the ovule to form a basal extension and an apical chamber surrounding the long micropylar peak. The nucellus is attached to a conspicuous stalk and is apically differentiated into a thin walled pollen chamber. Poorly preserved prepollen grains are present in the micropylar beak and the pollen chamber. As far as late Permian seed ferns are concerned, the seed ferns with angiosperm like features are known from the late Permian and early Triassic. Several fossil examples of seeds attached to foliage were described by Hell in 1929 from the Permian of China. These include Siphinopteris, Pectopteris, Elithopteris and Amplectopteris. Specimens of Amplectopteris, Triangularis foliage were preserved with seeds attached, but nothing is known about the internal structure of the ovules. Sterile foliage of 
Amplactopteris triangularis type has been included in the Gygnopteridales. The morphological leaf characteristics of Gygnopterids are more similar to dicotyledonous angiosperms than those of Glossopteridis. Among several other possibilities, the Glossopterids, Gygnopterids, Ketoniales, Pentoxyleals, and Benetiteals have been proposed as ancestors of the angiosperms. Note that at the present time, this issue of seed plant evolution remains unsolved. They are a group of plants very typical to the Cathesia and Gygnopterids flora. Lee and Yu in 1983 proposed that the generic name Gygnotonomia and Gygnotothica should be used to refer to specimens of female seed bearing leaflets and male microsporangia bearing leaflets. Reproductive organs of the Gygnopterid Gygnotonoclea. In a seed bearing reproductive leaflet 10 to 20 mm broad, more than 133 mm long, Gygnotonoclea, the seeds are arranged in two rows each born on the slightly depressed center of a marginal blunt, apical lobe of lower or dorsal lamina surface at the end of the secondary vein. Now coming to seed structure. The cross section shows that the seeds are elliptic. The attached seeds are 2.5 mm to into 1.5 mm in size and covered with glandular dots. Before the seed bearing leaf reaches the mature stage, the rimiform that is having a long furrow, micropyle is covered with the lid area and the lamina where the seeds are situated appears to be slightly convex. When the seed bearing leaf reached the mature stage, the lid, lid area dehyses and an ovate opening forms for pollination about 2 mm into 1 mm in size and the obliquely labiate structure is the micropylar seed end connecting with the rimiform micropyle becomes visible. Seed attachment is below the rimiform micropyle. This is a pruniform body, probably the nucellar portion of the ovule and a layer enveloping the nucellus like body, probably the integument that extends upwards to merge gradually into the labiate structure. The isolated unattached seeds are ovate to elliptical in shape have an average size of 3 mm into 2.5 mm and the surface is covered with fine situations and glandular dots. The microsporangia bearing leaflet suggests that a tremendous quantity of microspores was produced. The morphological characteristics of the reproductive organs of Gygnopterids is cons consistent with the hypothesis that they were wind pollinated, though Permian insects became rather rich both in form and quantities. The Gygnopterids appears to relate to be related to cycads and cycadoids. The partial angiospermous character of the Gygnopterids is of great significance. It resembles more or less the reserved ovule of some angiosperms. Today, 
there are four major lineages of gymnosperm seed plants that is cycads, conifers, jingos and netophytes. The gymnosperms have naked seeds that is their ovules and seeds are exposed to the surface of sporophylls and analogous structures in contrast to angiosperm seeds which are enclosed within a carpal. The modified leaves on which seeds are exposed are often structurally arranged in cones or strobili. Exceptions include Cyca species, the megagametophyte or the female gametophyte develops from functional megaspore within the nucellus. The megagametophyte of gymnosperms are homologous to the megaprothelium of the pteridophytes and in sometimes is sometimes also called primary endosperm. The megagametophytes of gymnosperms produce several archegonia with egg cells. As a result, more than one egg cell may be fertilized and several embryos may develop within a single ovule. Polyembryony of gymnosperm seeds is a known phenomenon. In most cases, only one embryo survives and therefore, relatively few fully developed gymnosperm seeds contain more than one embryo. In contrast to seedless plants, water is not required in gymnosperms and angiosperms as a transport medium for the pollen to reach and pollinate the ovules. In gymnosperms, the partly developed microgametophytes that is the male gametophyte, the pollen grain is transferred by the wind to the vicinity of a megagametophyte within an ovule. This pollination process via the micropyle and opening in the seed coat is integument that is 2 L. The microgametophytes of gymnosperms do not form anthridia. The gymnosperm groups differ in the pollen grains, pollination support structures, sperms and the fertilization process. The cycadeals seed is enchased by integuments, the testa which is usually organized in several layers. In the ovule, unripe unfertilized seed, the micropylar opening produces a liquid pollination drop which catches wind blown pollen and allows it to enter the pollen chamber. Afterwards, the spout of nucellar cap grows into the micropyle and hardens. By this, the pollen chamber is closed to the outside by nucellus tissue. The pollen germinate within the pollen chamber and pollen tubes grow in a hostoria like manner into the nucellus tissue. The nucellus tissue disintegrates and the archegonial chambers form and later merge with the pollen chamber. The archegonia harboring egg cells develop within the female gametophyte that is the megagametophyte, megaprothelium, primary endosperm and are located such that they are in open connection with the merge archegonial or pollen chamber. The pollen tubes release spermatoz spermatozoids which swim using their cilia to the archegonia. The spermatozoids enter the archegonia and fertilization of the egg cells generate one pro embryo in each archegonia. About half a year time difference is often found between cycad pollination and fertilization. A seed consists of an embryo, stored food and a seed coat. 
the seed replaces the spore of the seedless fern plants as propagation, dispersal and deposit or outlast or storage unit. Ferns and seed plants both exhibit a life cycle in which two heteromorphic generations alternate. First, the dominant diploid sporophyte which is the fern plant that you actually see as the large sized organism in nature. And second, the haploid gametophyte which for the ferns is the small sized few millimeter to few centimeter prothelium of ferns that you might see in nature if you search for it. In the seed plants, the haploid gametophytes became a hidden generation that completely depend on the sporophyte. It was hidden to us until Hofmister discovered the alternation of generation in seed plants. In seed plants, the male gametophyte or the micro gametophyte is hidden in the pollen grain and the female gametophyte or the mega gametophyte is hidden in the ovule. After pollination and fertilization, the ovule develops into the seed. Angiosperm and gymnosperm gametophytes and seeds are distinct. To understand the angiosperm seed, it is necessary to understand the gymnosperm seeds and how it evolved from seed ferns and progymnosperms. The gymnosperms have naked seeds that is their ovules and seeds or fertilized ovules are exposed on the surface of the sporophylls and analogous structures. The mega gametophytes or female gametophytes develop from the functional megaspore within the nucellus. The mega gametophyte of the gymnosperms is homologous to the mega prothelium of the ferns and sometimes called primary endosperm. The mega gametophyte of seed plants is retained and nourished by the parent plant within the ovule. That is, ovule is equal to mega gametophyte plus megasporangium. The mega gametophyte of the gymnosperms produce several archegonia with egg cells, fertilization by sperms from the pollen grain, often lead to development of several embryos within a single ovule. Polyembryony of gymnosperm seeds is a known phenomenon. In most cases, only one embryo survives and therefore relatively few fully developed gymnosperm seeds contain more than one embryo. In contrast to gymnosperms, in angiosperms, their ovules and seeds are enclosed inside the ovary which is the base of a modified leaf and is called carp. Another very important difference to gymnosperms is the angiosperm double fertilization. This leads to an additional novel tissue with maternal protuberance, the triploid endosperm. In mature seeds of most angiosperm species, the embryo is enclosed by endosperm tissue. Angiosperm seeds can be dispersed as fruits, that is the seeds can have in addition pericarp or the free fruit coat around the testa that is the seed coat. The Triassic and Jurassic age was dominated by gymnosperms although the first angiosperms evolved during this time. The rapid rise and early diversification of the angiosperms occurred during the Cretaceous time and was called an abdominable mystery by Charles Darwin.